five ways that you can get him to regret losing you notice i didn't say five ways that you can go back to him i also didn't say five ways that you can get your ex back so let me make that clear because i feel like when some people here regret losing you they think oh uh this is my opportunity to get him back N -n no no you just want him to feel bad about the loss number one do not respond to his texts or his calls or any sort of reach out. I don't care if he comes knocking on your door or rings your doorbell, okay? Very, very, very important. Because you have to understand with guys, a lot of times realization that they've lost you can be terribly painful and they'll start love bombing you, saying all these things, doing all these things to try and get you back in their life and to the place that you were in their life. After he does a little bit of finagling and he says a couple of nice words and he does, you know, um, tells you how much he loves you and he misses you and all that good stuff. It's kind of pointless because by the time he gets you back, most of the time he reverts back to his old behavior. Because there's not really, especially if it's only been a couple of days or a couple of months, there's not really any sort of regret there, right? It's like, yeah, I'm sad for a bit, but you'll still talk to me. You'll still come hang out with me. You know, after I say sorry a couple of times, you know, you'll still entertain me and it's all good. The same way I said you don't respond to his texts and calls and I also put in his reach outs, you don't acknowledge his, his existence whatsoever. Once he's lost you, you, he does not exist to you. He could be an Antigua. He could be in Bora Bora. He could be doing whatever he's doing. You're not mad about it. You're not sad about it. You're not happy about it. You're just, you don't feel anything because his existence is irrelevant to you. If you see him in a grocery store, you ignore him. If you see him at a family reunion, you ignore him. If you see him at a party, you ignore him. You don't acknowledge his existence whatsoever. You're trying to get this man to regret losing you, not trying to get this man to uh, oh, I haven't seen you in a couple of weeks. Uh, what's up, big head? And then now he's in your squirtle again. That's not what you're trying to do. I'm not saying, oh, you don't acknowledge his existence. I'm mad at you. I don't want to talk to you. No, you're irrelevant to me. I'm blocking you. No, I don't want to see you. I don't want to speak to you. I don't want to be. A no, no, no. That's that's giving it energy. You don't give it any energy. His existence has literally poof. He ceased to exist. He's vanished into thin air and whatever memories you held with him have poof vanished into thin air. Now, obviously, I don't mean literally, right, because you're still going to think about the relationship and stuff like that. I'm not saying ignore your feelings, but what I'm saying is that that is the way you should be approaching it. If you really want him to regret losing you because the anger or the sadness or being upset right? That's still an emotion. That's still energy towards it, right? When a guy regrets losing you or feels like he missed out on you, and then he sees that you're still angry or upset about the situation, well, you're giving him what he wants because you're putting energy towards it, right? He knows that you still care about him, right? Or the situation, or you still have feelings for him. If he sees that you're super upset with him, or he sees that you, you know, you're going out of your way. I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to mess with you. I don't like you. Da, da, da. If you see him at the grocery store, because like, be smart. Like you can, if you're aware of your surroundings, you can see him from a distance, possibly even before he sees you. In the event that you don't see him and he just taps you on the shoulder and you realize it's him, just walk away. There is a lot of embarrassment that he will feel. You don't feel it because you're walking away. That he will feel if he actually taps you on the shoulder and um, you just walk away. And he just sits there awkwardly, right? But that's even better because that's painful. Because you have to understand if he's bold enough for you guys to break up or whatever the situation is and whatever your relationship was, and he still feels like you, you guys are comfortable enough with each other that if he saw you at a grocery store, he could actually come up to you, then that should tell you he's not even at the point yet where he could possibly regret losing you because he still feels like there's enough of rapport there. There's enough of comfortability there that if he saw you at a grocery store, he could just come up to you, start a chat and you would chat with him, right? He doesn't really feel like he's lost you. He might feel like, okay, maybe we're not in a serious relationship anymore, but I didn't lose you. Like you're, you'd still be in my life. If I told you I wanted to hang out with you right now, you'd still go. Number two, you let him watch let's start off with social media 
you let him watch your social media. Now, obviously, not in every single scenario, he's going to be watching your stories. There probably will be some scenarios in which the guy's not watching your story, right? But you want to give him the ability to watch your stuff, okay? If he really was pressed enough to. I know some of you guys have private profiles. I'm not saying that you have to make your profile unprivate if you don't want to, right? But you want to at least give him the ability. Let me be very clear. I am not saying after you break up with this guy, you should continue following him. I would advise you to unfollow him, but allow him to stay following you. You also want to, uh, to get the point across that you're, you, you, you're done with him. You don't care about what he's doing or what he's on. So unfollowing him is a good sign to someone else that like, oh no, like they really actually don't care for what I'm doing. They don't even care to see, see what I'm up to, right? Especially if he also has maybe a private profile or whatever, right? It's good to unfollow them just to send a message, even if they don't see it, right? Maybe they eventually check up on it or not, whatever, right? It's good to send the message that like, yeah, I, you have been removed from my life. I don't, I don't, I don't need to see what you're doing. I don't care what you're doing. It's irrelevant to me what you're doing. My life is moving forward. Your life can go wherever it goes. I don't really care. But don't block him so that he can't see what you're doing, whether it be on Snapchat, Instagram. I know some of you guys post on WhatsApp. I'm not familiar. I don't do that. But WhatsApp, if it's Facebook, right? If it's TikTok, I don't know. I don't know why you guys be watching each other's TikTok stuff. But TikTok, whatever it may be, let him watch you post. Let him watch you go out with friends. Let him watch you enjoy your life. Let him watch you do whatever it is that you're doing, right? Living your life. Let him watch it because you want him to see that you're moving forward with your life. You want him to see that you're enjoying your life. You want him to see that your life didn't just revolve around him and he wasn't just your only source of happiness because he shouldn't be. Number three, very important. You do not watch him because you never know what you might stumble upon when you're watching his stories, okay? You might see him going out with another girl, that's triggering. You might see him out at a spot that he used to take you, that's triggering. You don't wanna put yourself in a situation where you're on the couch or you're on in your bed sad and all upset and now you wanna text him or call him. Don't, don't do that to yourself. And you'll definitely do that to yourself if you're spending all days refreshing his, uh, his, uh, his page to see if he'll ever post a story that's very sad and desperate behavior okay i'm gonna tell you the truth okay if you ended if the relationship is over allow it to be over okay don't sit on your bed uh refreshing his story a hundred times a day to see if he has posted something okay like you need like get a grip there is an ego element attached to um breaking up with the girl right uh, or not, not even breaking up with a girl, just a breakup in general, where if someone can identify that you're still curious about what they're doing, it's an ego boost because that's a clear sign that you still care what I'm doing because you're still interested in me and you probably still have feelings for me, okay? Well, I'm not saying that, oh, you shouldn't have feelings for the guy or you shouldn't care about the guy or whatever, but the whole point of this is that you want him to regret losing you right? And there's no way for, there's no space for him to regret losing you and feel like he missed out on something when he also simultaneously feels like you still care a lot to the point where you're going to watch him doing what he's doing, right? Rather than him feeling regret, he's going to feel the ego boost of like, ha ha, you still care. You still love me. Now I can play with your emotions. Now I can uh, post some, some, some sneaky, some sus stuff. And then now you'll probably be feeling the type of way because you're watching all of my stuff. It's control, right? You're giving him the ego boost because now he still feels like he has control over you, even though the relationship is over. And you never want to put yourself in a position where the guy still feels like he has control over you, even when the relationship is over, because that's a first class ticket to pain down where you're constantly going to be in pain and, and. You might find yourself in a situation where he realizes how much he can manipulate you. So he comes back in your life just to keep control of you because he knows how much control he has over you, even when you guys are broken up, right? You don't want to give him that amount of control. Number four, and this is going to sound like I'm dissing you. I'm not dissing you. 
Okay, I'm just giving you the advice. If you want the advice, if you don't want it, don't take it. Find a hobby or passion. Because in the process of this, I'm assuming you guys have broken up, which is why you want him to regret losing you. You do not, you do not, you do not want to find yourself in a situation where your life has only been this relationship. And now that this relationship is over, you don't have anything going for you. You don't have anything that you care about. You don't even have anything that your brain power is put towards outside of that relationship. And now that it's over, now all you can do is think about how the relationship is over. That is not good. First of all, it's not healthy because you're in a lot of pain all the time. Second of all, it's not good because that will easily put you in a position where you're likely to reach out to him or respond to his next text or call because the pain will just continue stacking and stacking and stacking to the point where you can't take it anymore. You're in so much pain that you respond to his texts and his calls and you, oh, I miss you too. Oh, I want to be with you too. There's no purpose anymore to what we're doing here. It's very important to find a hobby or passion so that you can have something that your energy is being put towards other than sitting around reminiscing on the relationship. I'm not saying that it's a bad thing to think about a relationship or to think about the good times that you had with someone, but there's a difference between like understanding that you like you had a relationship with someone, it ran its course, it didn't work out for a reason, and now you're in a better place because of that, because you learned some things and you grew, and now you can take those lessons into a new relationship that will hopefully be the one you spend the rest of your life with, in, right? There's nothing wrong with thinking like that, but there's a difference between that and sitting on your bed crying all day, just being sad and not getting out of bed or doing anything and just sitting, scrolling through pictures, scrolling through Snapchat memories, watching his story, waiting for him to post so you can see what he's up to. That, that is not healthy. It's also very painful. Unnes that's like torture. It's like unnecessarily painful. Because a breakup doesn't have to be that intense and that difficult. That's why it's so important to have a hobby or a passion that you can put your mind towards so that you don't fall into the trap of spiraling down a rabbit hole where you're just every day, you're just, what is he doing? Oh my God, did he post something? You're just refreshing all day, all like a maniac, all day refreshing. What did he do? Uh, you're going through from his from his Instagram. You go to his WhatsApp. From the WhatsApp, you go to the Snapchat. From the Snapchat, you go to the Sna Snapchat memories. Then you go to all your pictures and videos on your phone. Then you go back to his Instagram to check to see if it, it is insane, insane, insane. Not to mention that energy you're carrying around with you. So if you ever were to see him out, right? in public, at the grocery store, at a party, at a gathering, whatever it may be. Oh, trust me, all of that energy, right? All of that, oh, I miss you. I can't still, I'm in so much pain without you. Oh, I can't believe, I, my life is nothing without you. I don't have anything to do except for miss you and care about. All of that energy is projecting outwardly. So whether or not, and, and the crazy part about it, when that energy is so strong, you won't be able to control it. And trust you me, he'll feel it. And like I said before, it just becomes an ego boost when he sees how extremely bothered you are about the situation. And when he sees how much you're in pain because he broke up with you when he's like, yeah, I miss you, but damn, I'm not like you. I'm not like you. Like you're like, you're, you're melting, right? That's an ego boost for him. And he's never going to regret missing you that way, right? I guarantee you. All he's going to think to himself is damn. I have so much control over her. This is why I always talk to you guys. If you guys want your perfect relationship, one of the first steps is working on yourself and figuring out what you care about outside of just being someone's girlfriend or wife. That's why I say that that's so important. It doesn't even have to be like, oh, I want to solve world hunger. It can just be like, yo, I like painting. I really enjoy painting or I like writing. I really enjoy writing. Find something that you care about genuinely, that you enjoy genuinely. As an individual, not I only enjoy it with if I have someone to do it with or I only enjoy it with a partner. And I've talked about that to you guys before about figuring out the, the questions you can ask yourself and the things that you can do to figure out what you're passionate about. I, t I even talked about it yesterday. Just go out and start trying things. If you don't know what you're passionate about, go places that you've never been. You live in a great, easy society where all of your all the knowledge is at your fingertips. Each and every one of you have the ability 
to go on TikTok right now, if you're telling me I don't know what to do, I don't know where to go, I don't know where to hang out, I don't know, I don't know what my passions is or what I like doing, you can go on YouTube or YouTube. You can go on TikTok and type in things to do in my city. That's how easy your life is. Whatever your city is, things to do in Toronto, things to do in New York, things to do in Miami, things to do in Manchester, UK things to do in Paris, things to do in London. Simple. You type it in on TikTok and TikTok will, there's literally content creators that will show you all these different places and things that you can do in your city. And a lot of them, you'll be surprised. There's, you'll be thinking, oh, I've been in my city for years. I know everything in my city. I know everything that's going on. You actually don't. And you'll be surprised how many things there are to do in your city. Even if you live in a suburb or you live on the outskirts of a big city, you'll be surprised how many things there are to do in a city that you that you never even realized were possible. And all of those things are things that you can do by yourself or with a girlfriend or with a group of friends that are interesting and fun and will allow you to have your focus on something else other than just, I miss him, I miss him, I miss him, I miss him, I miss him. Because like I said before, there's no way that he's going to regret losing you if your entire energy and mindset and thought focus power is I miss him, I miss him, I miss him, I miss him, I want to be with him, I want to get back with him. Number five, improve your quality of life. This kind of ties in everything we've been talking about, okay? I don't care if you're not a big, uh, you know, putting yourself out there type of girl. Doesn't matter. When you improve your quality of life, you're telling him whether or not he's seeing it or not, and you're telling yourself subconsciously that you're actually better off without him in your life. You want to be in a place where you feel like you have a better life without him in it. Because at the end of the day, if he's lost you, you're not coming back. So the, there's no point of you sitting around being like, oh, I'm sad. I want to be with you. Oh, this it's so sad that we're not together anymore. Oh, all the great memories that we had. To, oh, that doesn't serve you in any way. Because if you're not going to be in the relationship again, yeah, cool. It's sad that you're not in the relationship anymore. But at the end of the day, you have to move forward. Is that what you want to do? You want to sit around being sad about your ex to the point where you don't ever get a chance to find your husband? This last part is not even about whether or not he sees it. It's just for you to know that, hey, I'm improving. I'm getting better. I feel good. I'm happy where I'm at. Every day I grow stronger. I get better. I get more beautiful. I get more intelligent. I get more. I just get more everything. So like I said, when he does call you or text you again, right? Because when he begins to have that regret, he's going to call you and text you. You're not phased by it where you're like, oh, I'm so sad about this relationship. Maybe I'll text him back and we'll get back together and we'll be. Because at the end of the day, you've just killed all the possibilities that he would have, uh, all the possibilities of him regretting losing you because he hasn't lost you. All he had to do was reach out to you and you're right back there. 